Hello and welcome to Bahrain Now, your source of local initiatives, happenings, talents and trends. I'm your host, Khalid Hijris, here to walk you through our exciting lineup of segments and personalities from around Bahrain. So don't go away and we'll be right back. Since the establishment of the National Space Science Agency, the NSSA, in 2014, the Kingdom of Bahrain has made large strides in reinforcing its position amongst the leading countries in the field of space, its sciences and various related applications in order to maintain comprehensive and sustainable development. This is reflected by the numerous initiatives the NSSA has made, including the upcoming International Space Forum, which is set to be held on July the 2nd. And to speak more about that, we have with us in the studio the advisor to the National Space Science Agency, Dr. Mohammed Al Uthman. Welcome, Doctor. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very thank good, you. thank you. It's such a pleasure to have you here with us today. Now, I'd like to start by asking you that the Kingdom of Bahrain has exerted a lot of efforts in this field and towards the advancement of space science. So can you give us a little bit of a summary about that? Yes, uh, since day one, uh, the establishment of the NSSA, the National Space Science Agency, we started to identify the elements we need to establish a space sector, something that's new, for Bahrain and for the region overall. And you know, by inertia, that people tend to keep doing whatever they are doing. Uh, we had a really good challenge and uh, gained lots of experience. So we started by first uh, identifying the elements we need to establish that sector. We had, the, of course, the royal decree establishing the NSSA as a roadmap. We identified several elements, part of which is the uh, we have to develop the national requirement. We have to do something meaningful for the country. Uh, we need to uh, identify the international uh, treaties and uh, uh, international entities that we can cooperate with. And we need to establish the core force to uh, work uh, to start our space uh, sector and space project on. Very brilliantly said, and that was a great um, summary of what the agency uh, does, and uh, it gives us a great um, a, a great platform really to launch into the next question, which is, I mean, the NSSA has been involved in so many initiatives. Can you tell us about some of the outcomes of those initiatives? Yes, uh, this is uh, part of the letting people know what's, what you can do with space. Uh, as we said, inertia is people tend to keep doing whatever they're doing the way they like it, the way they are familiar with, not to introduce new things. So. Uh, and this is what we faced, and this is when we talked to other space agencies in different countries, these also faced this, the same thing. You are trying to tell the people, hey, we can do something new, we can do whatever you're doing, but with uh, less effort, with, uh, with better accuracy. And we, so we started, for instance, the awareness sessions by talking to the decision makers, people in the public sector. This is, you can do with the space. The space is not just, we do it for leisure. It's not for fun, but it's for doing the real work. And uh, there are a number of projects that we've done that illustrate this, the, uh, what we're doing. Brilliantly said. And now, supporting research in space science, technology, and applications is an integral part of um, the agency's mission. So, what are some of the exerted efforts in that regard? Of course, yeah, uh, this is a really essential uh, point since this is a new sector. We don't have any uh, any people. We don't have the workforce in the space. And of the nature of uh, doing uh, work in space, you need a, a certain level of uh, professionalism. So, we started with, the, with this uh, fresh graduates people with uh, technical degrees, engineering, IT, science. Uh, one of our mandates is for those people to get experience in uh, space science and space technology by sending them to get their master degrees. So uh, back in 2018, six years ago, we started campaign, recruitment campaign. We had thousands of applicants. We chose very selective people and we sent those to get their master degrees. This is the way we started things. We start by uh, establishing uh, the right people. We send uh, several people to uh, uh, Khalifa University in the UAE. We send several people to uh, UK, to Surrey University, and we, those for a academic program to get their masters. And we send others uh, to do a more of a training programs that extended for months, not a couple of days or something. That's the way we establish uh, 
the workforce that we need to do the, our core business. Now, I know that the agency has actually gotten a bit of a reputation for investing a lot in talent and the uh, individual needs and development of people involved with the agency. Can you tell us a little bit of the logic behind that? Yeah, uh, it's not an easy business doing, uh, working in a space and uh, you'll face lots of challenge you are exploring and explored uh, territory. Sp uh, even for humanity, it's really an unexplored uh, territory. So uh, people, you need people with talent, they will, will face new challenges, new problems. They have to come with, an, uh, with the uh, innovative solutions. Uh, it's, it's not there, it's not something you look up in a textbook, it's not something you go and ask someone. You have to work and you have to solve the problem. You really need a talented, a professional people who know what they are doing. Brilliantly said. And the NSSA provides like public and private sector bodies with various services to, that serve different goals. Can you elaborate a bit more on that? Yeah, uh, this is one when we identified the elements we need, we need quick wins. And we started doing two things. We needed uh, upstreams and downstream services. Upstream services is people doing the hardware, putting the working, uh, building, designing the satellites and launching them. This is where you get the data. And then when you get the data, you need people, which is downstream, to analyze the data. So we uh, decided to work essentially first with the lab team. So we started the lab team. Uh, as I said, we compiled a list of national requirements. We said, okay, this is the problem we are facing here in Bahrain, how to solve them, what we need to solve them, what kind of data, what kind of training, what, what kind of even software, what kind of hardware we need them. Uh, so we started the establishing the lab. And from that lab, we started showing the people, look, this is what uh, the th things we can do. One of the first studies we did uh, with the uh, space uh, data and image lab is counting palm tree. We didn't have any reliable count of palm tree. As you know, Bahrain is the land of a million tree. And uh, when we did the counting, we used, of course, the new technologies, AI, not just uh, uh, old fashioned. We did it by old fashioned, by counting three by three. It took us about three months. And then we employed AI and it took about, uh, about two weeks. So we found out it's about uh, less than 300,000 palm tree. Okay, so now we can look at the entire of Bahrain, count the trees, and we, we have a reliable uh, scientific study for the number of, of palm trees in Bahrain. So this is one of the things that we provide. Of course, this was at the beginning. Now we can do lots of uh, studies. Uh, we can provide uh, for uh, dif uh, different entities uh, space images, processed space images. We can do analysis and we can conduct studies. Uh, for instance, we are looking at agriculture, uh, the green cover in Bahrain. We are looking at palm trees, the health of the palm trees. We are looking at mangrove. We are looking at oil spills. We are looking at renewable energy. We are conducting a study looking at how much we can generate uh, power, uh, solar energy by looking at the uh, uh, landscape, looking at buildings, trees, uh, the cover, and how much and the shades that they will uh, uh, have during the entire day. And we can estimate where the best location to place your solar panels and how much uh, solar energy can be generated. So it's really span. Uh, everything, almost everything you can do from uh, space. And uh, by a study by the ANOSA, the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, the, we, the, uh, we have the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, and 40% of those goals you cannot accomplish without space. Very brilliantly said, and it's amazing to see, like, the possibilities seem quite endless. Um, and now, uh, on a, a similar vein, I would like to ask you a little bit more about the theme of partnership. Now, I know that you are involved with various different entities. How do you value that partnership that you have with other entities as well? It's essential. It's very essential. You don't, we, don't, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. So through our partnership, and this is one of the elements we talked about in the beginning of establishing of the NSSA, is having international relations and getting the experience from other uh, space agencies, how to start, how the, the problem, the big problems, the things that, he, that you need to start with. And one of the, uh, our brothers in the United Arab Emirates, uh, really, uh, we have a very, very, very strong ties with them. And we really, 
uh, we had like a workshop back in the beginning where they laid the uh, for us we will discuss how to start with it one of the things that we need to do, uh, we needed to do is like the internal work of the NSSA having the regulations and of course that will be in line with the government uh, regulations how to th do things how uh, not to uh, having a conflict uh, with the government regulations so this is one of the things that we really uh, helped us in doing uh, accelerate the uh, the projects accelerate whatever we did the successes we had at the, the NSSA. Brilliant, and it's really great to see the holistic approach that the agency has to everything. And on that note, I'm sure you do a lot as well to keep the youth of Bahrain engaged or aware as to what's going on in terms of the space industry. So could you tell us a little bit about your efforts on that front? Yeah, of course, the, the youth are the future of, uh, of any nation. Uh, so w one of the, uh, for instance, the awareness session we had, we had with the, uh, we're looking at uh, university level students and high school and even lower than high school uh, one of the things we did for instance the uh, uh, few last summers was uh, getting the uh, high school student engaged in looking at uh, space data and we had uh, with the uh, our partners uh, workshops that's extended I think for a month or so uh, where they actually downloaded real actual space data, do some analysis and do some study. They are getting exposed to data. They will not be professional, but they know what, uh, what's available there and the capabilities, what they can do and what they cannot do with the space data. And this is the, the future. The uh, other thing we had with the uh, more of a primary level one to six uh, students, we had uh, uh, com some competition, one of the space art where these, uh, these students will draw something related to space. And we have cooking in space. This is one of the competition where they have, uh, this, uh, the children have to cook something, come up with some food that they can be used in space. Uh, other initiatives is for the uh, more of the uh, university level. We had a uh, program in space, which is basically there is a educational satellite that you can upload your code and test your uh, code really on a, a real satellite and uh, things that you can do. We had experiment on the moon where you can upload your, this is a more of a simulation, not a, a real uh, experiment you do in, uh, on the moon. We had a Kibo cube, the, which was a, an initiative uh, by JAXA, the Japanese uh, Exploration Agency, and ANOSA, which is the United Nations Office of Outer Space Affairs. Uh, they offer to, uh, for Educational Institute to send a, what we call a CubeSat, which is something like 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter uh, satellite, about one kilogram. Uh, they will launch it for free from the Kibo module at the uh, ISS. And this is what we are looking for. We are trying to push the universities to come up with something like that. Brilliant, and it's great to see how much uh, innovation goes in, into that, that part of things. Now, uh, moving on a bit, I'd like to ask a little bit. Now, you guys have achieved quite a lot ever since the establishment of the agency. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about some of the main achievements of the agency and how you managed to sustain those uh, achievements or the standards set by those achievements? I think uh, currently the, the, the biggest achievement that we are working on is Al Mundo Satellite, which is the first fully designed and built satellite by Bahraini. Uh, hopefully it would be launched soon, uh, in less than one year. And uh, this is a, uh, a satellite that's designed with a payload that was tested and programmed by Bahraini. There are several patents. We are using uh, image analysis on board of the satellite. We are using uh, encryption that was developed by uh, our uh, Bahraini engineers. And it's a patent uh, uh, payloads. So this is really one of the biggest uh, achievements that we can, uh, this is of course follows, this is part of the way we develop the core forces. Uh, this is follows the Light One satellite, which was built by the uh, Emiratis and Bahrainis. Now we are taking the whole responsibility to build satellite. This is on the uh, satellite side. On the lab side, I think we are starting to get more and more requests to do studies and to provide uh, analysis for data for different entities in Bahrain. I think this is really a testimony on the uh, worthlessness of our data and of the lab.
Absolutely. And now moving on to another um, another thing to look forward to. Could you tell us a little bit more about the upcoming International Space Forum, which is set to take place on July the 2nd and a bit about its agenda as well? Yeah, uh, this is the International Space Forum, the sixth version. Uh, it's uh, been organized by the IEF, which is the International Astronomical Federation. This is one of the oldest federation, all, oldest uh, uh, entities in the world. Uh, related to space. It was uh, established in 1952, right at the beginning of the space age. Uh, the IEF and the Italian Space Agency, this is the sixth version. It's more of an international uh, forum, but with a regional focus. Uh, the first one was in, uh, in Italy, uh, and then it followed up with the more in Latin America, uh, the uh, Africa and uh, the Mediterranean, and now in Bahrain, it's for the MENA region, for the Middle East and North Africa. Basically, it's get, uh, getting the decision makers, uh, head of agencies, more of a ministerial level, to discuss issues within the region and to set some points, some uh, short and medium range goals that the region as a whole that should strive for. As you know, space uh, sector is a very expensive sector. You cannot uh, do space research or space developed space technologies by yourself. Even the big countries, they develop the whole thing in a collaboration, like the International Space Station. It's not, it's not being developed by one country, by several countries. So basically, this is uh, the Space Forum. Uh, this, uh, the uh, agenda got three main uh, topics. Uh, the first one is using how we to uh, we are using the space data to improve uh, the communities on Earth and how to, to have a, uh, the impact on local uh, communities uh, to showcase that it's really doing something. The other one is the uh, exp exploring the universe, exploring the universe either the out there or in there. So we're uh, either looking at the planets and the uh, galaxies or looking at Earth and developing the new uh, technologies, uh, how space exploration, how uh, you need innovation, you need new technologies. The new technologies are not really just for space, but they, you can use it here on Earth even for different things that's not been has no relation to space, but it's a byproduct of what we are doing in, in a space. And the and the last uh, uh, topic is the international cooperation uh, and how you, to use the international resources you have from different countries, from people that are ahead of you to come uh, and to uh, add to what you're doing now to the technologies, to the manpower you have. Very well said. And now, just before we conclude, I'd like to ask you, do the, does the NSSA have any upcoming projects or anything that you might be able to share with us? Definitely, we have, we have lots of projects. Uh, as I said, there is, I think we all heard about uh, Cheng 6, the Chinese uh, uh, explorer that landed on the moon. Uh, actually, we have, uh, there is the upcoming uh, mission, which is Cheng 7, and we are participating in that. We are building with the Egyptian uh, space agency a, uh, high, a multi spectral camera that look looks at the surface of the moon and try to identify different objects on the surface of the moon trying to identify uh, some of the composition of the material so this is what we're looking for we are working hard on that and uh, this is, should be launched by 2026 but you know that like, any space project this size it can be delayed like t until 2027 or 28 this is a, a typical thing uh, the other things uh, we have also another partnership with Oman and China to have the uh, an artificial uh, intelligence payload that would analyze the image uh, on the satellite on the fly you know whenever a satellite uh, capture a picture it would transmit the picture down to earth this is will cost you money to uh, rent the uh, ground station uh, it will cost you power but sometimes the image is uh, is no good there is cloud cover there is dust uh, this package will do the analysis on board the satellite if the image is good it will be transmitted if the image is not good it will be discarded well, thank you so much for that. This was a very illuminating talk and it was such a pleasure to have you with us. And I hope we get to see you or anyone else from the agency again to talk more about this very fascinating topic. Thank you again. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We have more coming up on Bahrain Now.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at what's going on beyond the studio in the following report. In collaboration with Filipino Creatives Bahrain, the Philippine Embassy in Bahrain launched a vibrant and culturally rich art exhibition titled Kalainik Kalayan. The special art exhibition was held in celebration of the 126th anniversary of the proclamation of the Philippine independence on June 12, 2024. It was a testament to the unity and creativity of the Filipino community in Bahrain. And this year, in celebration of the Philippine Independence Day, the Philippine Embassy has collaborated with Intercontinental Hotel to have our exhibit this year entitled Kulay ng Kalayaan, or Colors of Freedom. This is the celebration of 126th uh, Independence Day of the Philippines, and they are featuring 13 of our Filipino artists residing here in Bahrain. Filipino Creatives Bahrain is already in its sixth year anniversary. So talking about my artwork, um, in this exhibit, Kalayaan, Kulay ng Kalayaan or Colors of Freedom, I have the Dalagang Filipina, which is depicting um, the women, the ladies of the Philippines. And she's wearing a traditional cloth, which is, um, it has an influence of uh, the Spaniards or the Spanish style of dressing. And um, it is rooted to our history where we were once under the rule of um, of Spain. And um, the medium I used in this um, painting is acrylic. I did the acrylic pour first. I did it in a silicone mat and I let it dry for almost a month after which I remove it from the mat and then trim it or design it into a cloth form and stuck it in the canvas. So the skin of uh, the Dalagang Filipina, I just hand painted, but all others are um, done through the acrylic pour. So I'm using this uh, medium, which is uh, quite different from the normal, because I always love to explore different ways on how to improve my artworks. And as an artist, I am delightful to have, um, to achieve the result that I wanted to. So, so far, um, Kulay ng Kalayaan, or Colors of Freedom, so my artwork is related to the history of the Philippines. I am one of the young participating artists here in this exhibit, and I am 17 years old, and I am currently studying in New Christian Academy. Um, these artworks are a few of the dearest of my heart. We have here um, an artwork entitled Masterpiece, which um, encourages and inspires self-growth, individuality, and confidence. I chose the flower lily because it is one of the most versatile flowers, and I wanted to use it to highlight how we embrace different faces in our lives and how we can uphold to the idea of us being a masterpiece ourselves. And one of the artworks here as well is called Embrace of Growth. And I would consider it siblings with the other artwork as well, since all of my artworks are related to each other. And this emphasizes how we should embrace our growth and how our environment affects our growth as well. So one of the highlights of this artwork is the butterfly, which is not as vividly seen. And it is um, intentional because I wanted to show that there is a bigger picture in our lives and in our purpose. And this butterfly also symbolizes um, our life being um, an example and an inspiration to others, allowing these flowers to bloom as well. As for me personally, I have different um, vessels of inspiration, one of which are my co-artists here in Filipino Creatives. They have given me the platform to showcase my artworks, and I have also seen and take inspiration from their artworks. And I believe that fuels me so much more to improve and to continuously hone my craft and my skills. And it's not just the exhibit that 
holds us together, but I believe it's a community of artists, a community of Filipino artists that continues to empower and upholds different individuals, even as young as I and even as young as our eight-year-old artists. So that's what, in, that, that's what inspires me the most. The event saw the attendance of many high officials and guests led by the Philippine ambassador to Bahrain and her spouse. They and members of the Filipino Creatives Bahrain welcomed the guests who were given a tour of the art exhibition showcasing the talents of the Filipino community in Bahrain. The one on my right, the peacock, it is entitled Tasenda. Tasenda means uh, something that is better left unsaid. I actually make this one during the stage where my emotions is like in a wavy stage. However, this tasenda is like uh, something beautiful that is unseen. So in this year's exhibit for the Kalayaan or Colors of Freedom, I have chosen this one because Peacock actually depicts the courage and power. And as a woman, we always have something that I like to stand with. So for tasenda, it is peacock because as you know, the peacock uh, is like humility or humble. And if the peacock is like in a state where it's only standing, the, its feathers are just laying down. But the peacock has the ability to, actually for the peacock side, it's a wooing side. Like if they're serenading someone, they're going to open their wings. But for me, for the peacock, when they open its wings, it's like uh, it's showing that it's confident and it's powerful. And the one on my left here is entitled Kalopsha. It is actually a detailed or a half portion of a butterfly. And for freedom, for me, uh, when I say freedom, it's actually like slow mornings, like with coffee and sunset, sunrise like that. And for this one, I make it detailed and only like partial of the butterfly because personally I cannot see like a butterfly full I'm actually afraid of it but I make it detailed because I want to show beauty in a detailed form not only as its whole form but for example uh, a person has a lot of sides and its detailed characteristics also is showing uh, like the essence of their true true beauty nature and also my emotions because for me painting is like my kind of expression and painting is not only like um, a medium for me it is a realm like another place where i can just be myself so through my pieces which you see are colorful i'm also hoping that sometimes my emotions can be also colorful even on the darkest days that i have so anyway my pieces are mostly uh, in the background of nature, yes. My favorite painting is spring. Spring because it is my favorite season where trees grow and flowers bloom. Spring also symbolizes freedom, uh, hope, and new life. With this art exhibit, I can grow and bloom as an artist with the help and support of Sir Butch, Kitalani, and the rest of the Filipino creatives. I was able to join art exhibits like this. To me, independence is to be able to have the freedom to express my emotions and thoughts through my artwork. To be the youngest artist to join an art exhibit, I feel inspired that I, that I can meet other artists and draw inspiration from their artworks. I also feel inspired to improve my, to improve my skills in painting. Welcome to our art exhibition, which is um, held here at the Intercontinental Hotel. So we are the Filipino Creatives Bahrain, and 13 of our members are having our artworks displayed in this uh, venue. And we are happy to celebrate the Philippine independence along with our embassy, the Philippine embassy here in Manama, headed by our um, Ambassador, Her Excellency Anne Halanduon Luis, and of course with the assistance of our cultural attache, Miss um, Jimarie Martel. So we are very delightful to have our art exhibit and showcase our artworks, our masterpieces, which depicts the freedom or the independence of the Philippines. So many of our artists here are having different uh, styles in or medium in doing their artworks. So 
actually we are having a youngest member of our team which is uh, she's only eight years old and one of her works are displayed here and also we are a team of um, very artistic and skillful members we have been here in Bahrain for six years the Filipino Creatives Bahrain and this is uh, also our sixth year so we are glad to share our colorful artworks to everyone. The Kolaine Kalayan event was a great success, highlighting the unity and creativity of the Filipino community in Bahrain. Bahraini Mango Festival was held at Bahrain Farmers Market at Horat Ali on Friday and Saturday, 21st and 22nd of June 2024. I used to be working an engineer, now I'm, I'm retired. After retirement, I start my small businesses, which is a sweets, our traditional sweets in Bahrain. And I find this place is very well, will come to anybody who starts new businesses. And I like the environment here very well. Especially now we are in a mango festival where everyone comes for mango. I'm producing this kind of sweets, which is mixture between our traditional sweets in Bahrain and the flavor of Omani's sweets. It's a difference a bit. People start liking it because it's, it's very unique. The event saw the attendance of huge crowds who came for the large amounts of mango. The event also showcased different Bahraini talents, including mango paintings on home and garden accessories and homemade mango chocolates, as well as fresh mango juice and ice cream, which everyone enjoyed, especially kids. Uh, we have a product, Bahraini product. Uh, we have a lotus uh, blended by water. And uh, we have uh, many vegetables, uh, Bahraini. We have uh, many new customers, they come to for the Mango Festival today, okay? And uh, we get many customers today because the festival, and they buy from our, uh, from our shop. So we came here to the farmer's market and we wanted to taste the mangoes here because my wife, she likes mangoes a lot. So I thought we'll just explore and I found that there are a lot of Bahraini mangoes here. And we tasted uh, one or two mangoes and we felt it was very nice. So we found this place very, very interesting. And uh, my wife is enjoying. The baby is also able to see different items. And he's also able to taste fruits. So thank you for uh, having us, uh, for organizing this uh, festival. Uh, the, the thing with the uh, Indian mangoes is it has to be transported here. And it's not, uh, you know, stored properly and it might get, uh, you know, lit the quality goes down. But here it's coming fresh from the farm and it's, uh, it's good to taste and it's very fresh for us to eat. So we like uh, Barini mangoes. The event brought together many vendors and farmers who displayed their delicious mangoes, which are much loved in the Kingdom of Bahrain and are currently in season. The event also included fresh mango harvests of countless farmers, aside from mango products and grafting mango trees. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you can be sure to reach out to us on our social media accounts shown below. We love to hear from you. This is Khalid Hidris, and until next time, good night and God bless.